This video is on finding real and imaginary solutions of polynomials by factoring. So we do want to use the difference of squares, sum of cubes, and difference of cubes. It will help you when you're factoring polynomials. So we'll keep those in mind and we'll use them. So we're going to find real and imaginary solutions to the following polynomials by factoring. So this first one, the first thing we need to do is make it be zero on the right. So move everything to the left by adding 20 to both sides. So we get x squared minus 12x plus 20 is equal to zero. So next, I have to figure out what can I add together to equal negative 12, multiply together to equal 20. So in this case, it's negative 2 and negative 10. So we just have x minus 2 times x minus 10, whoa, 10, <laughs> is equal to 0. So now we're going to solve for each x value. x minus 2 equals 0, and x minus 10 equals 0. So this one we're just going to add 2 to both sides of the equal sign to get x equals 2. And our other one, add 10 to both sides of the equal sign to get x equals 10. So this was the easier kind of polynomial to factor. So let's look at another one that's slightly different. We have x to the fourth minus 36. Well, you can see, hopefully you see that those are both perfect squares. So I'm going to use the difference of squares. So I know that x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. To figure out what b is, I know 6 times 6 is 36. So we have x squared plus 6 times x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, and all I did was use the difference of squares. Okay. So now I'm going to set each of those individually equal to zero. We have x squared plus six equals zero. And over here I'll do x squared minus six equals zero. First thing, subtract six on both sides. To get x squared equals negative six. But I know what, want to know what x is, not x squared. So I have to take the square root of both sides. But anytime you're taking the square root of a squared value, well, if you squared something, you don't know if it was originally positive or negative. So we're going to have to take that into account over on this side. Square root of x squared is just x. They undo each other. So we have to take into account whether it was originally positive or negative. All right? Square root of negative 6. Well, I can't factor 6 in, because 2 times 3, I don't have anything multiplied by itself that I can factor out. But it's multiplied by negative 1. So when we factor that out, we get an i. And it's left with a square root of 6. So there are two answers here. x equals positive i times the square root of 6 and negative i times the square root of 6. Okay, so let's do this one. We're going to add 6 to both sides and get x squared equals 6. Again, we want to know what x is, so take the square root of both sides square root of x squared is x. We have to take into account both positive and negative because when we squared it, it could have been either. And square root of 6 cannot be simplified. It is as simple as it can get. So x equals square root of 6 and negative square root of 6. So there are four answers altogether for this one polynomial. All right, so let's try something a little different. On this one, let's see, we need to get everything moved to the left. So I'm going to add 72 to both sides. So we get 2x to the fourth plus 26x squared plus 72 is equal to zero. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is divide everything on both sides by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we have x to the 4th plus 13 x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. Okay, I need to split this 
middle into two. I need to figure out what I can split it into. So I have to determine what plus what, or let's see, what plus what equals 13, and what times what equals 36. Okay, so we have uh, 9 and 4 should give this to us. Okay, so we have x to the fourth plus, let's do 9x squared plus 4x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to put parentheses around my first two and then around my last two terms. I can factor out of this first one x squared and I'm left with x squared plus 9 plus the second one I can factor out of 4 and I'm left with x squared plus 9. Okay, factor out that greatest common factor of x squared plus 9 and it's multiplied by x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. All right, so on this, I have to set each of these individually equal to 0. So x squared plus 9 equals 0. Subtract 9 on both sides, and we get x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides. We get x equals positive and negative. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. But we do have that negative, so it has to come out as i. So we have positive and negative 3i. Also, we have to do x squared plus 4 equals 0. So subtract 4 on both sides. We get x squared equals negative 4. Take the square root. And we get x is equal to, again, take into account positive and negative. All right, square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, and square root of negative 1 is i. So we, are, we have 2i. Okay, so in this one we do have four answers. All right, let's try this last one together, and then I'll let you try some on your own. All right, so we have x cubed minus 64 equals 0. So this is a difference of cubes. So we want to use this formula. So the a value is just x because, well, what number times itself three times is x cubed? The b value is 4. Again, what number times itself three times is 64? Well, that's 4. So that gives us x minus 4 times x squared plus 4 times x is 4x plus 4 squared is 16. That's equal to 0. All right, so now on this first one, this first set of parentheses, I can say x minus 4 equals 0, and I'm going to add 4 to both sides and say x equals 4 is one of my answers. Okay, over here, well, there isn't anything that I can multiply together to get 16 and add together to get 4. It's not possible. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula, negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, so we have x equals, well, let's look at a is 1, b is 4, and c is 16. And if you write it out, it can make it easier, so you don't have to put everything in and then simplify. So we have negative b, which is negative 4, plus and minus the square root. b squared, well, 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 multiplied by c, which is 16, gives us 64. All of this is over 2 times my a value, 2 times 1 is 2. So we get x equals negative 4 plus and minus the square root of negative 48 divided by 2. Okay, so 48 
if I look at what I can break this down to, I'm just going to do the math down here. So we have 48. Well, we have, I'm going to do 4 times 12. 12 is 3 times 4. And I actually don't have to break down my 4s because I do have, I know 4 times 4 can be pulled out, and I'm left with that 3. So let's see, we have x equals negative 4 plus and minus. I can pull out this pair of 4s as a 4, and it's multiplied by negative 1, so pull that out as an i, and we're left with the square root of 3. Doesn't have anybody buddy up with to come out, and it's all over 2. Well, I can divide each of these individually by 2. Just simplify it one more time. We have x equals negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus and minus. 4i times the square root of 3 divided by 2 is 2i times the square root of 3. And so this one has three answers because we have to take into account both positive and negative. All right, so here are three problems for you to go ahead and try. You're going to factor them, and when you're ready for the answers, go ahead and um, pause it here and then come back, and we can do them together. All right, so this first one. First thing I'm going to do is divide everything by 2. So we get x to the fourth plus 10x cubed plus 21x squared equals 0. I can factor out an x squared times, what's left over is x squared plus 10x plus 21 equals 0. All right, so now we have to see, is there anything that we can add together to equal 10, multiply together to equal 21, 3 and 7 work. So we have x squared times x plus 3 times x plus 7 is equal to 0. So we have to solve for each individually x squared equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, and x plus 7 equals 0. Here we have to take the square root of both sides. x equals, well, I don't have to take into account positive and negative because the square root of 0 is just 0. Subtract 3 on both sides and x equals negative 3. Last one, subtract 7 on both sides and x equals negative 7. That one did have three answers. All right, this one. Okay, so again, I'm going to move this 9, subtract 9 on both sides. We get 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 9x minus 9 equals 0. All right, first thing I'm going to do is put parentheses around my first two and my last two terms. See if there's anything that I can factor out. This first one I can factor out of 4x, and I'm left, 4x squared, sorry, I'm left with x plus 1. Whoops, I want a plus in between. Oh, I'm just going to rewrite that plus. <laughs> I wanted this, did not take that into account, I wanted this negative inside the parenthesis and I put plus in between. All right, to get what's in the parenthesis to be the same, I'm going to factor out a negative 9. Then I'll be left with x plus 1 in my parenthesis. So my new greatest common factor is x plus 1. So factor that one out, times, here we have 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Okay, so x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 on both sides, and x equals negative 1. Over here, 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Add 9 to both sides, and we get 4x squared is equal to 9. Take the square root of both sides. Well, square root of 4x squared is 2x equals, we have to take into account both positive and negative because x was squared. 
Okay, we have square root of 9. And while the square root of 9 is just 3, so we have 2x equals positive and negative 3. So here I'm going to do each individually. I'm going to say that 2x equals 3, divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 3 halves. And 2x equals negative 3, divide both sides by 2, and x equals negative 3 halves. So positive negative 3 halves and negative 1. All right, and number 3. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 27 on both sides and get 8x cubed minus 27 equals 0. Okay, so this is difference of cubes. I know that a is equal to 2x, b is equal to 3. So we have 2x minus 3 times my a term squared, well, 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x is x squared, plus 2x times 3 is 6x, plus 3 squared is 9, is equal to 0. So here we have 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, and we get 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 3 halves. All right. So can we multiply anything? Oh, let's see, we have multiply anything to get 4 times 9, which is 36. Add anything to get 6. 6 times 6. Well, we can always do the quadratic formula. A equals 4, B equals 6, C equals 9. So we can do negative B, which is 6 plus and minus the square root of 6 times 6 is 36, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 9, is 36, divided by 2 times a. So there are multiple ways to do this one. 2 times 4, which is 4, <clears throat> gives us x equals negative 6. Well, 36 minus 36 is 0, so that goes away over 4. So I can actually reduce that. x equals negative 3 halves. All right, so we do have our two answers.